Welcome to Build Your Maverick Business, the podcast for underdog, outlier, and renegade entrepreneurs. Brought to you by Strange Creative Studio. If you dream of going off on your own and launching your rebel empire, but don't know where to start, you're in the right place. We'll teach you how to use mindset, branding, and practical advice to build a killer business and transform your world. And now, here's your host, founder of Strange, Alex Pitt. Hello, everyone. To my UK listeners, I hope you had a lovely four-day weekend. I hope you're recovered. I'm recording this on the Tuesday after said four-day weekend, and I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but oof, it was a heavy one. (laughs) It was a really fun one, but bloody hell. I'm glad that we're only celebrating that once every, what is it, 75 years? Can't be doing that all the time. Too old for this now. To my non-UK listeners, we had a four-day weekend for the Platinum Jubilee, and it was basically just an excuse for everyone to get drunk in the street. And yeah, a lot of people (laughs) took up the offer. (laughs) Anyway, it was a great time. It was a lovely weekend, but I'm not here to talk about the Platinum Jubilee. I'm actually here to talk about something else that I got up to over the weekend, which uh, inspired this week's episode. Um, I went to a music festival. I went to Slam Dunk. Now, I know there was actually quite a few festivals over this weekend, all varying types of music, all different genres, but Slam Dunk was an alternative, what do you want to call it? I don't know, rock, metal, there's some emo bands playing, that kind of thing. And uh, there's this magnificent thing that happens when I go to these events where... Usually you have to go to some kind of London station and travel a little bit outside of London. And it happened a few weeks back now. I went to go and see My Chemical Romance in Milton Keynes of all places. I'm still baffled at the fact that My Chemical Romance decided to come to the UK and they chose Milton Keynes. I feel like it was a bit of a throwing a dart at a map kind of a situation. Sorry if you're from Milton Keynes, don't at me. Anyway, so what happens is... You have to go to, obviously, a a station to get to Milton Keynes. And I live in London, so that station was Euston. And it's this funny thing that happens, because the closer that you get to Euston, I'll be at, like, I don't know, Paddington, and you see a few people wearing black. And then you get a little bit further down, you get to, like, Great Portland Street. And there's a few more pairs of Doc Martens. There's a few more leather jackets. And then by the time you get to actual Euston Station, it's like the fucking Black Parade. Like There's just emo kids everywhere. And yeah, the train on the way up was just like this sea of black of piercings of tattoos. And the same thing happened when I was on my way to Slam Dunk. I had to get to King's Cross and exactly the same thing. You get to Paddington, there's a few more people. You you get the idea, right? You just, you spot your people and the closer you get to the venue, the more of these people you start to spot. And it's really heartwarming when this happens because it just, it makes me feel like I found my clan and we're all going to some kind of, you know, old kid convention it's very sweet it's very wholesome i mean not if you're like an old lady watching all of these fucking goths come at you it must be terrifying but it's fun from the inside now i love these events because when i see that kind of thing it reminds me of one of the fondest members of the strange team the legend that is max and i'm going to tell you about max if ever you visit strange hq you will see max's face a lot And let me describe him for you. He is, seeing as this is a podcast and you can't see him. So he's got a lot of tattoos. He's got a beard. He is always wearing black. He's that kind of rebellious, no fucks given kind of a character. He's, what, 50 odd years old. He's director level. He's a senior guy. He calls a lot of the shots. And he is obsessed with brands like The Great Frog. He's always kitted out in a load of skull rings. He's always wearing his Doc Martens. He's a musician. He loves Marshall. We know that I love Marshall. <laughs> He's got a massive vinyl collection. He's always at Reading and Download Fest. You bet your ass he was with me at Slam Dunk and My Chemical Romance. At the weekends, you will find him in a tiny backstreet venue in Camden, usually the Black Heart, World's End, Devonshire Arms, Underworld. Max is an absolute legend. We love Max. He also doesn't fucking exist. Ooh, didn't see that one coming, did you? Unless you've heard me talk about Max before, which I do. No, Max is not a real person. 
He is, however, one of the personas that we use at Strange. Aha. Uh-huh. See, it always comes back to business. You think I'm just going to sit here and ramble about what I got up to at the weekend? Oh, no. This is business advice here, guys. Now, personas are such a fucking useful tool when you're building out your brand. They are the way that you work out who you are targeting, who you're speaking to. And rather than just giving it some generic bullshit stats like this person is X years old and they, I don't know, live in this area and they have this income level. Like it's so fucking generic, right? And you know how I feel about things that are generic. We don't fucking do that around here. So Max is the name that we've given to one of the three strange personas. And now all of the strange personas have the same things in common, right? Everything that I just described, they're into these alternative interests, if you like. I'm giving it the air quotes right now. You can't see that. They like dressing in black. They like emo, metal, rock, whatever you want to call it. Like they hang out in Camden. They've got a lot of piercings. They've got a lot of tattoos. They are the the rebels, the outlaws, the mavericks. And now if you've listened to this podcast before, you will have heard me using those exact words, the mavericks, the outliers. That is who we're targeting, right? And it's not just people who are out breaking the law. No, these are very specific, rebellious, no fucks given kind of people. And everything that I've just described, the, the black parades, these alternative people that you see, that's the strange audience and that's who we're targeting. And so giving them names and understanding how they tick, what they look like, where they're hanging out, the kind of brands that they're into, what fires them the fuck up. That's so much more powerful than going down the route of demographics. So location, age, income, very kind of statistic based stuff. Now, if you think back to my little fangirl rant that I have in the episode, a few episodes ago now, your brand is not your logo, where I essentially just went on a little bit about how much I love Marshall. (laughs) I really fucking do, by the way. And how I had that connection with them. Even though I don't play an instrument, I'm not musical, but I feel such a strong connection to that brand because I feel like Marshall are my people. Marshall are in my clan. That's who I want to align myself with. Now, Strange, as a brand, is powerful enough and strong enough that we naturally attract those kinds of people. The Black Parade swarm towards us. It's not that I'm banging on about how great our design services are or how cheap our prices are or how strong our systems are. It's that our audience see themselves in what we put out. Now, Max has a stock photo that we use in a lot of our advertising. And that advertising does very well because the Maxes of the world see themselves, they recognise themselves and they want to align themselves with us. That's the power of a persona, because we are so specific about who we want to speak to. Those people naturally gravitate towards us. They see themselves and what we're doing. So creating personas is such a powerful thing to do, because you give people the opportunity to see themselves in what you're doing. Now, the other reason why personas are so useful for us is that we have three, and they are three tiers, if you like. Now, I mentioned that Max is in his 50s. And he's in a director level role. Now he is the top tier persona. The strange offering is everything from free downloads to this podcast, which I like to give out for absolutely nothing to help you guys out. You are welcome. To online programs, which are a couple of hundred quid, you know, that is the low end of what we do. That's the kind of low hanging fruit. Now at the other end of our service offering, we've got five figure packages. We've got things that cost tens of thousands of pounds. Now, the person who is buying the couple of hundred quid online program is not going to be spending 10, 20 grand on branding. They're just not, (laughs) maybe in a few years time. So we need to make sure that the way that we speak to the person who's buying the low hanging fruit is not the way that we're speaking to the person who is going to be buying the five figure branding package. And that language is very different. The offering is very different. Using personas, it not only helps us create a picture of who these people are as living, breathing humans, not facts and figures, actual people, but it helps us work out how we are speaking to those people. What kind of language do we need to use? What problem are we solving for them? 
The problem that we're solving for the low end here, they're called Jamie, by the way. Now, our three personas are Jamie, Morgan and Max. The reason that we chose those names is because they are gender neutral, because we don't serve a specific gender. Another thing that we've included in our personas, right? So it may be that you're only speaking to women. It may be that you're only speaking to men. It may be that you're only speaking to non-binary people. It totally depends on what your service offering is, what your product is, who you want to speak to. But getting really crystal clear on that makes such a difference. So when we do speak to the Jamies, the low-hanging fruit people, we are offering them something which isn't a huge monetary investment. And we're saying, look, you can have this brand strategy. You can have this understanding of how branding works for this low investment. We're not saying that to the maxes of the world because the maxes do have the budget. That's not what they're worried about. The problem that we solve for them is making sure that they're going to work with an agency who don't fucking do generic. (laughs) They're not just going to get some checkbox, cut and paste, bullshit, boring agency offering. They're going to get to work with an agency who gets what their brand is all about. Now, these are the directors of the Great Frogs, of the Marshalls, of the Doc Martins. Those are the kind of people that the Maxes are. The Jamies are probably still working a full-time job and bootstrapping the shit out of their business. And they haven't got a load of money to spend. So speaking to them in terms of budget is actually a lot more effective. Do you see what I'm getting at? Really getting into the minds of what your audience are thinking and feeling, what they're frustrated about, but also where they're hanging out, what they're interested in, what makes them tick, what fires them the fuck up. Really picture them like a living, breathing human. Give them a name and work out what problem you solve for that person. And it will shape so much of your messaging, of your creative, of everything And it'll also probably help you create some more products. Because once you understand what makes them tick, you know how to help them. All right, guys, short and sweet for this week. But I think that's hopefully enough to get you thinking. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about personas and you would like a template to create your own persona, that is one of the modules in the Not Just a Pretty Logo program, which I am delighted to say is live. It's finally live. It's out in the world and people can buy this and complete it and breathe. (laughs) I'm actually chuffed to say that um, a few people have already finished it and those are the people who pre-bought it. So thank you to you guys for being so fucking keen that I went to check and see if anyone had had made a start on the programme once it had launched and checked in the next day and people had already finished it. So yeah, well done guys. Top marks. Gold star. Anyway, if you would like to find out more, I will put the link to the program page in the show notes of this episode. Apart from that, go off and have a think about your personas. Who is your max? I bet you can't wait to meet them. All right, my loves, have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Got an idea for a maverick business of your own? Learn how to build a powerful brand that will get people obsessed with our online program, Not Just a Pretty Logo. You'll learn a simple step-by-step framework that will kickstart your killer brand and help you find your raving fan base. Find out more today at strangecreativestudio.com.